Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And may He bless you by giving you understanding. The greatest blessing that the Holy Spirit can give us is understanding of His Word, that we may comprehend His Word, that we can discern His voice. It's much more glorious than to win the jackpot. This is much more glorious than to conquer a specific blessing here in this world. Because when the Word of God is understood, it's comprehended, those who receive such blessing to understand the Word of God, for sure they are going to be happy because it's the voice of God, the voice of God. Pay attention. Speaking of the voice of God, I would like you to understand this word that came forth from the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus died, resurrected, ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God Father. And therefore, from God Father, He, Jesus, sends the Holy Spirit to those who believe in Him. It's not to the evangelicals, but to everyone who believes in Him, those who believe, those who truly believe in His Word. And look at what He says. He said like this, But when the Helper comes, when the Helper comes, who is the Helper? The Helper is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit as our Helper. Imagine this, pay attention. You were caught off guard and a tragedy happened in your life. You lost a loved one, for example. Then in that moment, in that instant that you receive the news, your world collapses, the ground you know, opens beneath your feet, and you get desperate. Anybody would be you know, unstable, emotionally speaking, because of such news. So imagine the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, the official helper, the true helper. When he comes, the person is comforted, the person is helped, however great the pain may be in their soul, however cruel the news might be, even still, the comforter comes and embraces that person. He embraces them. Then that's it. The first thing that happens is what? What is it? Peace. So, when a person receives the helper, when they receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, when they are sealed, marked by God, it's God's mark on them. And this mark is the Holy Spirit. And the devil and the entire hell knows that that person has been marked and they are untouchable. The devil can't touch them. So, when a person receives the Holy Spirit, they receive peace. The helper is, is the peace. He brings peace. 
it is the spirit of peace itself. He comforts, he helps, he removes that immense pain and the person receives peace. The person receives peace. A person who receives such news. Jesus said, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from my Father, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me. He will confirm, let's put it this way, of me. He will glorify me. He will testify of me. So, when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, the thing that happens immediately, instantaneously, immediately, is that they receive peace. But it's not an apparent peace. It's a permanent kind of peace. It's a constant kind of peace. Even if the person will have problems, the problems of this world, difficult situations, even if they go through the valley of shadow of death, the valley of shadow of death, even if they face tribulations, and the tribulations are inherent to the Christian faith. Tribulations are not the problems. The tribulations are problems that involve faith. A person is tribulated not because of their mistakes or because of their poor choices, but they are tribulated because they carry within themselves a faith in the living God. So they obviously living in this filthy world, in this cruel, unfair, wicked world, Obviously, that the world will oppose them, and they will oppose the world, because there is no compatibility between a person full of the Holy Spirit and the world. Jesus, through the Apostle John, said that he who loves the world, he who loves the world, the love of the Father, is not in them, meaning the Holy Spirit is not in them. He who loves the world is already stamped, is already showing that they don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the love of God, the peace of God. But they don't have Him as long as they don't find Him, as long as they don't have an encounter, a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus. But when a person has this encounter with the Lord Jesus, then they receive the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and then they have peace. They live at peace within them. On the outside, it's war, but on the inside, it's peace, peace. That's how Jesus lived. And that's what he passes on to his disciples, his followers, to everyone who believes in him. He lived in perfect peace, in communion with the Father, with the direction of the Holy Spirit. He was always at peace. However, in the moment of pain, he expressed his pain. 
before being arrested, judged and condemned, killed and resurrected, there in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, my soul is deeply sorrowful, even to death. But even still, he was strong, because in that moment, he was going to be placed in a position of shame and humiliation to save all those, all those who believe in him. So it was necessary, praise God, that he died for us, for you, for me, for all of us. But today, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father and he sends the Holy Spirit to those who believe in him, to those who believe in his word, to believe in God is to believe in his word. When a person believes in God, they believe in his word, not, not a religion. They don't believe in religion. No, they believe in the word of God. And the word of God is not religion. The word of God is a standard. Words that came forth from God's mouth to give life to those who believe in it. For example, when you open the Bible, in the very first verse says like this, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And the same thing is with what concerns this word here, that when the Helper comes, that I shall send to you from the Father, it's the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, and He will testify, He will confirm, He will be a witness of me, he will speak of me, he will convince people of me. How? How can I how can I believe in someone that I've never seen, that I've never felt or touched? How? Only the Holy Spirit can do that. The Holy Spirit is the one who convinces, who confirms, who testifies what he does, what he does, what is the immediate result when you receive him. It's peace. The first thing is peace, because God is peace. God is peace. Peace. He is a father and he is peace. So the prince of peace, the spirit of peace, when he comes upon a person, then this person receives peace. They are comforted. They receive comfort. Their eyes may even be shedding tears. Their soul may even feel suffocated. But when the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of Peace, it's like the father, the mother that goes to their child who is desperate and say, here I am. And the person feels comforted. The person feels peace. They feel well with the presence of the other person. I remember, this is very nice, I once went to visit a politician who had lost his child. It was very abrupt and, and tragic, it was horrible, horrible. And the father as well as the mother were there receiving, you know, the visitors and 
we would see in their face the expression of pain, the unbearable pain. Unbearable. And when, when we introduced ourselves, he looked at me and I looked at him and what was I going to say? What was I going to say? There was nothing to say. I wasn't the comforter, the helper. However, in that moment, the Holy Spirit gave the direction. Then I approached him and I said, Look, I have no words to give to you. But I'll give to you what God has given me, which is peace. Then I gave him a really tight hug. A hug. That was all. And I perceived that he felt such a relief in that moment. Only God could do such a thing. And the same thing I did with his wife as well who was very desperate. I said, I have no words, but what I have, I give to you. And I hugged her. And she perceived the difference. Whilst many were crying, lamenting, and trying with words to alleviate their pain, they continued suffering. Why? Because what words are capable of comforting, you know, someone who has that child lying down in a coffin due to a tragedy? There are no words. But the hug, only a hug of someone that has the Holy Spirit is capable of changing such situation. And that's what happened. That's what happened, and up until today, they are very grateful for, for such gesture. But I didn't do it because I was better than others. No, I did it due to their situation, the pain, the unbearable pain they were going through. I placed myself in their shoes. I also have children, so I could imagine what they were feeling. It would be an unbearable pain. I've never lost a, a child, praise God. But I felt that pain. So God saw our desire to help them. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. For example, right now, as you participate of this live transmission, right now, if you are desperate, desperate, afflicted, you don't know what to do, your life is a mess, literally a mess, and you are on the ground, or rather, you are at the bottom of the pit. The Holy Spirit wants to fill your life with peace. But he only comes to you if you receive, if you accept, if you submit, you subject yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, accepting him as your only Lord and Savior. Because Jesus said, I will send from my Father, I will send the Helper from the Father. So, how can He send the Holy Spirit to someone if this person has in their mother, in their father, in their husband, wife, their children, in their family or their money, you know, these things are first in their life. So how can he give them the Holy Spirit? 
So you have to remove everything that is taking the first place in your heart and place the Lord Jesus as first in your life. Then, yes, if you do it now, in this moment, right now, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. But is it this simple, Bishop? Yes. Don't I have to be in church? No, you don't. Don't I have to be on the altar of the church? No. You can turn your house, your place, this prison cell, you know, your, your bed, wherever you are, you can turn this into your altar. Wherever you are watching me from, turn this place into your altar and place your life on it. Say, oh my God, here it is. I don't know you. I, I don't have much information about you. But I know that you've come into this world and you gave your life for mine. You gave your soul for my soul. Then I give myself to you. I surrender. I submit my soul to your will. I submit my will to your will. I submit, I surrender to your rules. May you rule over my life, O Holy Spirit. Then that's when you, you, you have a true experience and this comfort that brings peace because the helper is the one who helps, who comforts, the one who brings peace. I ask you, what brings peace? Peace, permanent peace, more than peace, the spirit of peace himself. Receive peace there where you are, dear friend. Don't look at your sins. Look at the author, the author and finisher of our faith. Look at the one who gave, who paid with his own life in order to cleanse you, to wash, to purify you from your past and turn you into a new person. It's Jesus. Look at him. The devil, the accuser says, you don't deserve it. You did this, you did that or the other. No, don't listen to this voice. Pay attention to the voice of God. The voice of God is this. When the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, from my Father, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Truth, He will testify. He will bear witness of me. You are going to know that Jesus is there with you. Bishop, pray for me. Do you need prayer? Do you need prayer? No. What you need is to just obey. It's nothing to do with feeling. You have to obey the Word of God. And when you obey the Word of God, then God enters you. He helps you. He strengthens you. He comforts. He consoles you. Be right now, there where you are, filled with peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. May the Holy Spirit do His work in you, there where you are, right now. Do you believe? Then receive it. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.